Welcome to the Guide to Recreational Drumming, giving you tips and techniques to improve your drum circle experience. I'm your host, Dennis Cotton. In this segment, we're going to build our own bass drum, cheap. Okay, I'm going to tell you something I've probably never said before. I got a problem with the djembes. Not the drum themselves. I mean, I like the drum themselves. The problem is there's too many of them. Lots of them. Everybody has one. They're the most manufactured, most bought, most used drum in the world. And that's great. We love the drums. But the problem is they're a lead instrument. It's meant to be loud. It's meant for soloing. It's meant for a lot of stuff. It's not necessarily meant to play well with the group. It's, the whole design is to be loud and to cut above the ensemble. Imagine 50 lead guitarists in a circle all playing at once. Take a second. Got it? Now you see my problem. What do we do about that? We need balance. We need to have other types of drums in a drum circle. A drum circle with one type of drum, to me, is pretty boring. I mean, that's why we use shakers and wood blocks and, and, and bells and things in order to, you know, spice it up a little bit, give some character. But there's one thing that really makes a drum circle come together, and that's a big, fat bass drum. Big ones. Problem is, they're kind of expensive. But today, we're going to learn how to make one pretty cheap. Okay, let's start our do-it-yourself bass drum. Call it a bass drum, call it a gathering drum, call it a dun-dun, whatever you want to call it. It's the drum that's going to add that low element, that in-your-chest element that we want from our drum circle. This is my mama gathering drum. And it's basically just a thrown out bass drum that I found in a dumpster. Somebody had a kid's drum set, didn't like it anymore, threw it away. I got it. You'll be able to find these, like I got this out of a dumpster, you'll be able to find some of them, uh, this I found on Craigslist for very little money. And it is just a floor tom from an old drum set. Cheap. Cheap. Ten bucks. Free. Ten bucks. I don't think I've spent more than a few bucks on any of these. And they come with all the hardware and whatever necessary. So, let's start. What do you need to do this project? First thing you need is a screwdriver. Phillips head, could be flat head, you'll, have, you'll know when you take it apart. Next thing you're going to need is uh, some contact adhesive, the spray-on type. You can do the paint-on type too, but I recommend this is way easier and better. One caveat, do this outside. You do not want this in your house. Do not spray this in your house. Then you're going to go down to your fabric store, and it could wherever they sell fabric, could be Walmart, could be whatever, and they always have the remnant bins, the things where they somebody cut something they didn't want, they threw it away, they put it in there for just a couple bucks. Fabric. Now that you have all your supplies together, it's time to start taking the drum apart. You're going to need a drum key. You can pick them up at any music store if you don't have one. Um, you could probably use a little wrench if you have it, but it takes time. It's easier to pick up a dollar drum key. Take the heads off. Unscrew them, pull everything out. You're not going to break anything. Just pull it off. Sometimes the heads are kind of beat up, maybe not what you want to have to look at, much less it won't sound that good. So we're going to have to go to the store and we're going to get yourself some new drum heads for the top. Now you're only going to need one. I find that the drums sound better with just one head on them. Uh, two heads adds an extra resonance that starts to uh, become overpowering. I like a nice sort of dead sound. A standard size floor tom is 16 inches in diameter. You measure from the inside of the rim to the inside of the rim. Typically a floor tom is going to have the legs on it and everything. 16 inches. A standard bass drum, like the one we're going to make with Mama, 22 inches. But check. Check it. Once we've taken the head off, what we're going to find on the inside of the drums, we have these little lugs, and the lugs are held in by little screws. Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, whatever it is that's holding these in. You're going to remove these. Take these right off. And actually, you're not even going to need all of them. Uh, we're only going to use the top part where the head is. These bottom ones could be extras. If you're missing some around, doesn't matter, you'll have extra. 
Removing the lugs from the inside of a drum is fairly simple. Take your Phillips head screwdriver, set it in, crank away. That's one. That's two. And there's your lug. So when you're done and you remove all of the lugs, you're gonna end up with a shell like this. It's empty. You're gonna grab your spray, head outside, spray it on with a piece of fabric that you cut to approximately match. Actually, leave a couple inches overhang, just to be sure, so you go off circuit a little bit. I like this fabric, it reminds me kind of a jester. And you're gonna apply the fabric right over top, all the way around. And when you get to the end, just spray a little bit extra spray right on the, the corners and just overlap that edge. It'll stick right on there, you never have a problem. When that is done, you're gonna go through with a little, uh, I take a little razor blade and I just cut the holes right where I'm going to put the lugs back in. Find the lugs and stick them right back on, screw them back in, you're ready to rock. So we've got our drum covered with fabric and we start to put our lugs back in. <clears throat> Use our lugs, screw them back in. It's time to put the head on. I have some definite preferences about heads. Uh, Remo makes a really great drum head called the Fiber Skin 3. And it's a simulated animal skin. It's actually all mylar, it's all plastic, but it looks and it feels and it sounds like an animal skin, which is kind of what you want to go for when you're doing drum circle stuff. So, very easy to find. These heads go for, depending on the size, you know, $10, $15. Uh, find a new head, place it on. But, here's the secret. What I've done is I've taken the old head off and with the razor blade, cut it off of the rim. Then cut it in a circle and ended up with a piece that looks a little bit like this. Now this is an old beat up ring that I've put on before I put the other head on. This is a sound muffling ring. And what this does is this takes all the ringing sound out of the drum and just pull it out ever so slightly so that you have a more focused solid tone. It does a lot to enhance the drum sound. Uh, I suggest you do it. Now making the ring is pretty easy. In this case I have an old drum head, one that came off the floor tom. And using a razor, utility knife, exacto knife. I don't have to tell you to be careful with this, right? You can cut yourself. Anyway, and you lay that right on the edge where the metal part starts the shoulder of the head. And you cut all the way around. Cut it off. Take a pair of scissors and cut right around where you see the black line. And when you're done, you end up with a ring that looks sort of like this. Now granted, this doesn't look like much, but it does an awful lot in focusing the sound, adding depth, and taking a lot of those overtones out. It makes a very nice, muted, natural sounding drum. The lugs have been added, cloth is on. We take our newly cut ring from our old head, and we place it on like that. Then we take our new head, our Fiber Skin 3 head that we bought from the local drum shop, and put it on right over top of that. Replace our rim over top of that, line up the holes, and we'll start putting on these screws. Now, in order to have this sound the best that it can sound, it's got to be kind of properly tuned. This is tricky. A lot of drummers take a long time to figure this stuff out, but all you got to know is that you want to keep it even. You don't want it to be going this way. So what I like to do is I like to finger tighten these lugs, get them on all the way around so that they're nice and even and finger tighten, and then just tighten one screw this way, turn it once this way, go to this side, turn it once, go to that side, turn it once, and just work your way around so you're going in an even even pattern and you're not creating the drum head to be put all askew. It really is up to your preference what the timbre and the tone of the, uh, the, um, the drum is. In this drum I kept it a little bit on the low side so we have a... On this drum a little bit higher sounding. And if you really want to get fancy you could play them both. Okay, these are my smaller drums made out of floor toms from drum sets. I like these 
uh, for a number of different reasons. One is that they're really light. Second, when I don't put the bottom head on, I have room to throw other drums and things. Percussion, whatever, you want to throw your stick, you want to throw an extra coat, blanket, whatever, you're going out. All fits in these, throw them in, throw them in the car just like this, they're ready to go. You get there, dump all your stuff out, sit down, ready to play in one second. These are great drums. They add that bass element. They're fairly large. This one is 16 inches around, so it gives you a good substantial bass drum sound. Now, what if you want something more? <laughs> what if you want something big and really in your chest? That's when we do the Big Mama Gathering drum. Here she is. All things apply to what we've done before. We put the take the lugs off, put the fabric on with the glue, put the um, lugs back on, put on our, our lug nuts and our rim. We're only doing one side, nothing on this side, same reasons. Uh, the head is slightly different and here's what I like about this head. This is also by the Remo Drum Company and they do make a fiber skin version of it although I did not use it on this. This is called the Power Stroke 3 bass drum head. Now with the other drums that I had you make, we cut out an old head and we put that ring in. What I like about these Power Stroke 3 bass drum heads is that they have the ring already inserted. They're already there. This is a trick drummers have been doing for years and years and years, and Remo caught on to it and said, we're going to manufacture drum heads that do just that. So they do. It's a big bass drum head. Now these are a bit more expensive, and the, the fiber skin ones I really, really like a lot. Um, and they go for, you know, they could pay up to $30, sometimes maybe a little bit more for them. But they're so worth it. Considering the overall cost of the drum, to buy a big gathering drum could cost you a couple hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars, depending on what you get. And we're going to do this for less than a hundred bucks. So we've added our bass drum head, we've added our fabric to the outside to make it look nice. Now we need to put some legs on it. Without legs, it'll sit too low to the ground. You won't be able to play it very comfortably. It also hampers the sound a little bit. So we need to find some legs to put on. Here is um, some drum places that you can check out online. Here's the address right here. And uh, that'll show you where you can get some floor tom legs. They can be as expensive as you want them to be or as cheap as you want them to be. You can get them as cheap as $30 or, or way expensive into hundreds of dollars, depending on the quality. Don't need anything that fancy, though. Right, so this is the slightly tricky part. We need to attach these legs. As you see, we've got three of them. They are sold in sets of three, so that's basically what you're going to be dealing with if you're buying new. And they come in two parts. You have the bracket, and you have the leg itself. A little bit of carpentry skills is required in order to drill some holes into the shell. Now what you're going to do is you're going to make a, uh, you know, just estimate an equilateral triangle. And that's going to give you an idea of where to place the legs themselves. Drill a couple holes in the shell that correspond with the back part of your bracket. Screw them in with supplied screws. Add the leg into the holder. Tighten it up. You're ready to go. It really is that simple. Finding parts, repurposing things, using fabric you've got laying around the house. A lot of this can be done quite easily and very, very inexpensively. And the other thing is, don't worry about screwing anything up. It can all be fixed or hidden. Hey, whatever you do, it's gonna sound great. Anything other than just having the same old drums coming all the time, it's gonna be a big hit at the next drum circle you go to. So, have a good time and I'll see you around the circle. Thank you.